The Attack on Titan anime is finally about to come to an end. Hopefully. The final part of the final season is right around the corner, so I think it's the perfect time to look back at the most recent game in the series. The thing I was looking forward to the most was getting a decent recap of the series since Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle covers everything up to the end of Season 3. And even though not every part of this experience was perfect, it gave me some interesting ideas for what a potential sequel would look like. But we'll get more into that later. For now, let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the campaign and see what it has to offer. In the main story mode, you'll start off creating your very own Attack on Titan OC. And I am all for the self insert, so I think that's a plus. I just wish it wasn't part of a series where you're almost guaranteed to get eaten alive by giant naked men. Anyway, your character slides its way into the plot as a recruit that follows along the 104th Cadet Corps. And that includes Eren, Mikasa, Armin, and basically everyone else that you know and love. Your character doesn't make too much of a difference within the regular story sections, but you will be able to experience all the events from season 1 and 2 through their eyes. Between missions, you'll have a lot of time to get closer to each character and build up somewhat of a friendship. Even when it comes to characters who you know are some sketchy individuals, it's still nice to see how they interact with you and get to see a side of them that you normally wouldn't. But as much as the plot tries to make you fit in well with the main scouts, you can tell that you don't have much of a place here. Sure, it does leave you as a neutral party that doesn't get in between the controversies and plot twists, but then you also can't make an impact on what takes place. And with an already stacked lineup of characters with some deep backstories and emotional drama, it feels odd being some random cadet who's just here. I'll admit though, the story is adapted pretty well. It goes in depth on all the major moments while still maintaining a consistent flow of combat in every chapter. And of course, you also get your character moved from place to place as you follow the plot. So even when the story does start to focus on Eren being under the care of Levi's squad, you'll be right there alongside them. And you'll continue all the way until the end of Season 2's story where you can do one final mission that is very unique to the game. It felt like a complete way to wrap up the story, but remember that we also have Season 3 DLC to get into afterwards. But first, let's talk more about the combat because I'm surprised at how much fun it is to play this. The gameplay is where stuff starts to get juicy since it's a different spin on the Dynasty Warriors formula. Being developed by Omega Force, the same people responsible for every other warrior spinoff, you have to expect the hacking and the slashing. But obviously, you're not going to be fighting hundreds of enemies that are 20 times your size, so having a gameplay system focused on engaging fights against one enemy at a time was essential. And I'm sure if you know anything about Attack on Titan, you know that the way to defeat Titans is by slicing the back of their necks like a holiday ham. Here you'll be doing this to go in for the kill, but you also get bonus upgrade materials for slicing off the limbs. And that may sound very simple, but it becomes a balance of strength, speed, timing, and precision. Everything comes down to how you angle yourself to go in for the final blow. And a lot of the time, this works perfectly. Going in for those sweet and simple kills was super satisfying each and every time. But then we get to some other situations and it can all crumble to pieces. I'm not going to complain about this too much because it's actually a good thing, but the collision physics can really wreck your vibe. Now let's say I'm aiming at a titan and I'm ready to go in for the kill. If it just so happens that another titan or a tree or a building gets in between you and your target, the line will snap and it leaves you feeling like shit. And the reason I say it's not a terrible thing is because that's kinda how things would work in real life too. So it does add to the overall immersion and realism for the physics, but damn does it feel bad when it happens. Sometimes you'll even be faced with titans doing some kind of awkward dance moves after you cut off their legs too, and it really makes it tough to get some of these kills. So when it's good, it's really good. And when it's bad, it's frustrating, but also pretty funny. And I love how inventive Omega Force was by adding a higher level of complexity into fights. Take any regular Dynasty Warriors game, for example, and even though many of the newer ones change the flow of gameplay, it's still Dynasty Warriors at its core. But here, they clearly couldn't just do that and get away with it. You actually need to think about your positioning, the speed of your attacks, striking at the right times, and of course, paying attention to your surroundings at the same time. 
and depending on the kind of titan you're faced with, there will be areas you need to focus on. Most will give you extra materials for cutting off their limbs, and that's a great way to grind for better upgrades as you get further in. And then there's these more powerful titans that have a green glow on their limbs. And for these, you need to lower their defenses by attacking each green part, and then once their gauge goes down, it's time to go in for the kill. They can be a little bit tricky to take down, and most of these are going to be the closest thing that you have to any boss battles. But oh, remember how you can build relationships with your fellow cadets and get to know them better? Well, luckily, it's not just for those who want to hear more about their backstories. As you increase your friendship, you will gain some skills to equip your character with. And a lot of these can seem pretty minor, sure, but some of these are literal game changers. Now, I wasn't able to do this in my playthrough, but there is a skill that you get from Levi that can make the rest of the game into a cakewalk if you level him up enough. And for those who want to go to the extreme and do all the more difficult challenges after the campaign, it is crucial to get those companion levels up and get the best skills possible. But as for the gameplay in the main campaign, that's basically it, but the DLC actually adds in quite a bit more, so let's talk about that. The final battle DLC is what made me feel that much more disappointed in what the main story gave us. This time around, our created character is nowhere to be seen. Instead, we'll play as the main series characters like Hanji, Mikasa, and Levi through the plot of Season 3. And let me tell you, this felt so much better instead of sneaking your OC into every single plotline. Like, as much as I do appreciate the option to make your own character, they never made an impact on the plot. It felt much more genuine being able to fully immerse myself into the lives of the characters who matter most. Like being able to experience the story of Levi and Kenny through the eyes of Levi. And it had me wondering how things would have been playing through season 1 and 2 as Mikasa, Reiner, Annie, and especially Eren. And it's even split into two separate storylines with you being able to see it through the eyes of Levi and the other squad commanders through one half and the 104th cadets in the other half. Although there aren't as many animated scenes here, it just feels right being able to walk in the shoes of these characters as they deal with their own struggles. And there are a few new additions to the DLC, including new weapons that make things so much more fun. You're able to use the Thunder Spears like a special technique, and they can obliterate Titans with ease. It honestly feels overpowered, but it's balanced with you not being able to use them too frequently. And the same thing goes for the other new special technique that straps fucking Gatling guns onto your arms. And yes, it's just as ridiculously fun to play with as it sounds. If the Eldians had this from the beginning, the whole series would have lasted 12 episodes tops. And finally, we have the Territory Expansion Mode, which is another new addition that helps you reclaim the territory within the walls. And if you're someone who likes the idea of base building and managing your squad mates, then this is a perfect addition for you. You can choose from whatever character you want to and use them to lead your base to success. You can gather materials to improve your barracks and recruit as many other characters as you can to fill out your team. And there's also chances to get closer to your team here too, just like in the story mode. And if you want to, then you can play as your created character through this mode too but I'm pretty sure you already know my feelings on that. But my question now is, what do you think would happen if they wanted to create a complete experience with all of the series in one game? I can see it going one of two ways, with the most obvious being to make a totally new game. Seeing how much the plot changes when we do learn more about Eren and his motives, I would love to see a game that mixes up the timeline to give a different perspective. And without spoiling much, it's clear that so much of the plot as we know it through the first three seasons is kind of flipped on its head as we learn about what led to all these events. And being able to see all that through Eren's view would be something totally beautiful and I would love to see it happen. But I just have a gut feeling that the other option for Season 4 content could happen too. Because it's possible that Koei Tecmo does the same exact thing that they did with Pirate Warriors 4 and adds new DLC content for Attack on Titan 2. And I know it's definitely not the newest game out there, but if they have the balls to dig into a 3 year old game and add 9 new characters, I just would not put it past them to slap a new content pack on here and call it a day. 
What we got from the Final Battle DLC made me realize how much content they were actually capable of bringing to the original. So many new improvements, weapons, and an entirely new mode that adds at least a dozen hours of content. If they did release one final DLC to cover the entirety of Season 4, then I'm positive it would turn out to be something incredible. Maybe not as groundbreaking as reformatting the whole campaign to flow with the plot, but still something worth getting into. But you can let me know all your thoughts on this in the comments because I'm genuinely interested in seeing what you all think about it. And also let me know what you think about Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle as it is right now. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and I'll see you all in the next video.